Have you ever thought you could mine bitcoins from a post office? Now, that's a question that, quite frankly, sounds like it's straight out of a sci-fi novel. But believe it or not, this isn't a tale of fiction, but rather a testament to the creative and innovative spirit that is the world of cryptocurrency. Let's take a step back for a moment. For those unfamiliar with the term, mining bitcoins is the process of creating new bitcoins by solving complex mathematical problems. This process requires a considerable amount of computing power and as a result, a significant amount of energy. Traditionally, people mine bitcoins from their homes or dedicated mining farms where they have access to cheap electricity. But here's where it gets interesting. What if we could use public facilities and resources to mine cryptocurrency? Now, I'm not suggesting you haul a bunch of high-powered computers into your local library and start mining away. But what if we could harness the unused or underused resources in these public spaces for something as innovative as mining bitcoins? That's the question that led me to an unexpected mining site, a post office. Yes, you heard that right, a post office. It might seem like an odd choice at first glance, but upon closer inspection, it starts to make sense. Post offices, especially in smaller towns, have a lot of idle time, with computers sitting unused for hours on end. What if we could use this downtime, this idle computing power, to mine bitcoins? Now I know what you're thinking. This sounds too good to be true, right? I mean, how can you just walk into a post office and start mining bitcoins? Well, the process wasn't as straightforward as that, and it certainly wasn't without its challenges. But the end result? A whopping 2.3 bitcoins mined from a post office. So how did I manage to mine 2.3 bitcoins from a post office? Let's dive in. You might be wondering, how can a post office be an ideal place for bitcoin mining? Well, the answer is simpler than you might think. To mine bitcoin, two key resources are needed. A steady supply of electricity and a robust internet connection. And guess what? A post office has both in abundance. Let's start with electricity. Bitcoin mining requires powerful computers running complex algorithms around the clock. This process is energy intensive. A post office, with its regular business hours and often overnight security, typically runs on a continuous power supply. This makes it an unlikely but potentially effective place for Bitcoin mining. Next, we have the internet connection. Mining Bitcoin is a process that relies heavily on fast, reliable internet. Transactions need to be verified, blocks have to be added to the blockchain, and new bitcoins are created. All these tasks require seamless connectivity. A post office, being a hub of communication, usually boasts a robust high-speed internet connection. But here's the kicker. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. While the idea of mining bitcoin in a post office may sound intriguing, it's crucial to consider the legal and ethical implications of such a setup. Post offices are public spaces, typically government-owned. Using their resources for personal gain without permission is likely illegal and definitely unethical. So, while we're exploring this concept hypothetically, it's not something we endorse or recommend. It's always important to pursue cryptocurrency mining in a manner that respects the law, other people's property, and ethical guidelines. In a nutshell, a post office could theoretically provide the necessary resources for Bitcoin mining. However, the legality and ethicality of such a setup are questionable. It's a fascinating thought experiment, but in practice, it's better to stick to more traditional mining setups. Now that we have our setup, it's time to get down to the actual mining. Mining Bitcoins is like solving complex puzzles, but what does that mean in practice? Well, let's break it down. Imagine a bustling marketplace where people are trading goods, but instead of fruits and vegetables, they're trading Bitcoin transactions. These transactions, once confirmed, are like the lifeblood of the Bitcoin network. They're what keep it going. Now imagine a ledger. This isn't your ordinary run-of-the-mill ledger. This is the public ledger, known as the blockchain. It's where every single Bitcoin transaction ever made is recorded for all to see and it's continually growing as more and more transactions are added. But these transactions don't just magically appear on the blockchain. No, they need a gatekeeper, someone to check that they're legitimate before they're added. And that's where Bitcoin miners come in. Bitcoin miners are like the auditors of this digital marketplace, 
They're the ones who verify the transactions, checking that they're valid before adding them to the blockchain. And this verification process isn't just a simple check. It's a complex mathematical puzzle that the miners need to solve. They need to find a special number that when combined with the data in the block and passed through a hash function, results in a hash with a certain number of leading zeros. This is where mining software comes into play. The software utilizes the computer's resources, specifically its processing power, to solve these puzzles. It's a race against time and against other miners. The first one to solve the puzzle gets to add the block of transactions to the blockchain and is rewarded with a certain number of bitcoins. Now, you might be wondering, why go through all this trouble? Why waste resources on solving these puzzles? Well, it's all about securing the network. By verifying the transactions, miners are preventing double spending, a fraudulent technique of spending the same Bitcoin twice. They're also ensuring the integrity and the chronological order of the blockchain. But it's not just about maintaining the network. There's a reward in it for the miners too. For every block of transactions they add to the blockchain, they're rewarded with a certain number of Bitcoins. This is known as the block reward. It's like a thank you gift from the network for their hard work. So in essence, Bitcoin mining is a twofold process. It's about verifying transactions and adding them to the public ledger, the blockchain. And it's about solving complex mathematical puzzles using mining software and the computer's resources. It's a race against time and against other miners with the reward being Bitcoins. And that's how the mining process works. But how does this translate into actual Bitcoins? So we've mined some data, but how do we turn this into actual Bitcoins? You might be wondering, well, it's time to connect the dots. Once the mining process solves a complex puzzle, the reward is a certain number of Bitcoins. This reward is given by the mining software itself. You see, the Bitcoin network relies on miners to verify transactions and add them to the public ledger, known as the blockchain. In return for this service, miners are compensated with bitcoins now let's talk numbers originally the reward for mining a block was 50 bitcoins however this reward halves approximately every four years in an event called halving by the year 2020 the reward had shrunk to 6.25 bitcoins why does the reward decrease you ask this reduction is a deliberate strategy built into bitcoin's design to control inflation and ensure that not all bitcoins are mined too quickly it's this scarcity that gives Bitcoins their value. But here's where things get interesting. The reward for mining isn't always consistent. It varies depending on many factors, including the difficulty of the puzzles and the number of miners competing to solve them. In my case, the combination of these variables led me to mine 2.3 Bitcoins. Yes, it was a challenge, but also an incredible journey. What's more, the Bitcoins I mined aren't just digits on a screen. They have real-world value and can be exchanged for goods and services or converted into traditional currency. So there you have it. The mining process, in essence, is a blend of computational power, a dash of luck, and a sprinkle of timing. It's a unique venture where your computer not only solves puzzles, but also generates money. And that's how I mined 2.3 bitcoins from a post office. It's not magic. It's not a trick. It's the fascinating world of bitcoin mining where data turns into digital gold. Let's recap how I mined 2.3 Bitcoins from a post office. We began our journey at an unexpected mining site, the local post office, where we set up our gear. The key was to find a space that had a strong internet connection and enough power supply for our equipment. Then, we delved into the nitty-gritty of the mining process itself. We discussed how we used specific software to solve complex mathematical problems, contributing to the Bitcoin network and earning Bitcoins in return. Finally, we saw the fruits of our labor, the conversion from mined data into actual Bitcoins. We mined a total of 2.3 Bitcoins, a substantial success given the circumstances. So, if you've ever thought of mining Bitcoins, consider thinking outside the box, maybe even as far as your local post office. It's not just about where you mine, it's about how you do it and the unique approach you bring to the table.